using crowdsourcing. I'll be doing this with Agi. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Agnes Abba. I use that name to Agnes Abba. I'm the co-founder of Igala Wikimedia Community and a member of the Igbo Wikimedia User Group. This subject, like um, my co-presenter has said, this subject lies um, at the intersection of biodiversity cons conservation, linguistic and power of community-driven knowledge sharing. So and we are so happy to be presenting um, biodiversity in underrepresented languages using crowdsourcing. So yeah. Okay, so what is crowdsourcing? Crowdsourcing in biodiversity. In biodiversity refers to the practice of collecting and compiling biological and ecological data from wild and diverse groups of individual or organization, typically through the use of um, digital platform and technology. I could also say here that crowdsourcing in biodiversity refers to the practice of um, enlisting the help of large number of individuals, also volunteers or citizen scientists, yeah, to collect and contribute biodiversity mm -hmm. data and observation. It could also involve um, the harnessing and, and collecting power of people, typically through digital platforms, like we said earlier, mm -hmm. and technology, to gather information about various aspects of the um, natural world, including species identification, their behavior, habitat, and distribution. So back to you, Dean Shitigo. Yeah, thank you so much for showing us what crowdsourcing means. Now, why the need for biodiversity data? Biodiversity data is very important. It's important because it helps us uh, in preserving indigenous knowledge. When we say uh, indigenous knowledge here, we're talking about um, underrepresented language communities and also the knowledge they have about biodiversity data. A lot of the flora and fauna that we have uh some of these organisms can be found in certain countries these countries spe speak specific languages uh sometimes which is not english so if the knowledge is only found on only one language platform it it means that we are not able to preserve that knowledge in another language for those people again it also helps us in enhancing knowledge once we get um biodiversity data information on different platforms then we are going to be encouraging a lot of people from different, from diverse backgrounds to be able to utilize this knowledge and also um, get so much information on that. Again, it helps us fill the information gap. Go onto the English Wikipedia and you realize that um, a lot of information currently about uh, the various species of different organisms are not still captured on the English Wikipedia and also other language Wikipedia platforms. So if we consciously work on biodiversity data, it's going to help us fill the information gap on the various language Wikipedia platform. Imagine um, the contents on maybe plants and animals on, the, on a particular language Wikipedia as against an indigenous language Wikipedia like Igbo Wikipedia, the Ban Wikipedia, the Yab language or other uh, Wikipedia platforms that we have. Also, um, biodiversity data is important because uh, it gives us the room for open knowledge and collaboration. Um, there are lots of other organizations that are researching deeply into the area of biodiversity. And if we continuously and consciously try to digitize the data on them using iNaturalist and also uh, Wikimedia or Wik Wikimedia projects like Wikipedia, Wikidata, wiki source, trust me, we are going to be getting a lot of people to collaborate with us. And at the end of the day, we'll be contributing to the total sum of human knowledge. Again, uh, because of the licenses, uh, Wikimedia projects are using CC0, public licenses, CC by AC, uh, CC by, it allows for other people who need this data to easily get the data and utilize on their projects and also for other research works as well. 
So we have an um, introduction to iNaturalis. So we've been going forward, we'll be, we'll, we're going to be discussing iNaturalis. We're going to tell everyone what iNaturalis is and how it works. But first off, I want to give an, um, that's a, an introduction, like a definition. So what is this iNaturalis? iNaturalis is an American 501 non-profit social network of um, naturalists, citizen scientists, and biologists built on the concept of mapping and sharing observation of biodiversity across the globe. So we have um, various features of iNaturalist. So we have the observation recording. So going to iNaturalist platform, like um, what um, a researcher would do on iNaturalist, first of all, you have to do what we call observation recording. How is observation recorded? You take you record observation through phone or a photo a photograph. Sorry, yeah. So you go to the field, like um where you can take observation of plants and animal. There's a flora and fauna. By taking that picture of that particular observation of that particular plant and animal, that is what observation is. So once you take the picture of that, which is called the observation. And then you upload it to iNaturalist platform. So you're uploading to iNaturalist platform. iNaturalist platform has what we talk and uh, what we call an AI, which helps us to identify what the species is. And once they identify, once the species identify, we might we can know what the name of that particular species is. At times, you can even go to like a Google lens to tell us what the name of that particular species is. And for example, we don't even know, or the iNaturalist platform is not so sure, that the AI itself is not so sure of what the observation which you recorded is. There are so, so many persons that will come to help you to identify your particular observation. And the people will tell you that, okay, this is, this, um, this you observe, this is the name, there will be so many identifications to what you've observed. So once there are two to three identifications which ascertain or agree to that to the a particular name of an observation, it will get to research grade. So we have um, what we call research grade on iNaturalist. You have um casual ID, which I need casual um ID. Then we have um we have normal identification. So the next one we have we talk about the community engagement. So the community engagement itself again still boils down to this identification. Like what the explanation says as the definition of iNaturalist is more like um a social network, be it like your Facebook, your Twitter account, and all. So it's more like um a social network, which is actually a non-profit organization. So there's a community interaction, community engagement that goes on in this iNaturalist platform. There's an app to iNaturalist and you could log on to iNaturalist through the website and through the app. So for the community engagement, again, like I've been explaining, we do, we, we do like um, special identification on the community engagement. And also, since it's a social platform again, we can do what we do, what we say, like um, we can chat, you can follow somebody on the platform and all. But basically, the iNaturalist platform is basically for researchers, citizen scientists, observers who are really interested in biodiversity and biodiversity observation itself. Then we have data sharing. We do what we call data sharing on iNaturalist platform. It's open. It's open. It's not like it's a closed place where my observation. People cannot come to see my observation. People come to see my observation. They interact with my observation. So that is what we talk about the data sharing. Therefore, mapping. Once a picture is taken, an observation is taken, it records a particular place. That's it. The, the um, iNaturalist app now records a particular place in which the observation is taken and map it to the observation which you are about to record on the iNaturalist app. Then on iNaturalist yeah. platform again, we have what we call our personalized dashboard. 
like we have on other social media networks, we have our personalized dashboard on iNaturalist platform. Then various projects can go on on iNaturalist platform. For us, our project is on Wiki Mentor Africa. So we have so many projects, like anyone can come to, group of persons can come and start a project on iNaturalist platform. We have um, Wiki, Wikimedia um, biodiversity platform too on iNaturalist platform and so many others. Then you can work on iNaturalist platform even in an offline mode. Yes. And when your data is turned on, your observation synchronize, synchronizes with the app, then it uploads to the platform. Then iNaturalist platform again can be used for educational purpose. People go to read about observations about plants, about animals, about flora and fauna, about their information on a naturalist platform, then conservation and social sharing. So you can, since it's um, a naturalist platform, is a social network of a naturalist, it, it helps more in our social sharing of observation of plants and fauna. That's our flora and fauna. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, um like um, Agi has mentioned, the iNaturalist app is available on the App Store and also on the Android Play Store. You can just type iNaturalist as it is spelled here and you'll be able to download that onto your phone. And you can also visit the web version to um, create an account and log into, your, into the website to look at other uh, information, biodiversity information. Now, iNaturalist, is a, a platform for biodiversity data, but it is not a rep repository for external data. Uh, she mentioned about the, uh, what's the name? The data sharing, uh, in as much as it allows for data sharing, it is not a repository for external data. It is not also um, a tool for mapping everything. It is just a tool for mapping biodiversity information and biodiversity data. Again, it is not a way to back up your photos. So um, if maybe you have a, a repository of your pictures on your phone or your laptop, anything you can keep it there, no. Uh, because it's, it's a social platform where other researchers come to um, kind of identify, help identify plants, do further research on the various uh, organisms or biodiversity data you upload there. Uh, it is not a backup for your photos. You can use other online backup systems. Again, iNaturalist is not a way to collect secret information. What this means is that um, the data privacy information is very open and you can get to read that. It also um, lays on the uh, friendly policies. So you have uh, the friendly policies made known to you there's no way it's going to be collecting secret information about you. Um, and so your privacy is rest assured. Thank you. Okay. So basically, this is um, how observation, this picture depicts how observation is taken. So you can see the lady over there, she's holding a digital camera, trying to take observation of these very plants. Yes, so as you can see, she's taking observation of this very plant. So this is the observation aspect of iNaturalist. Then from that observation, the, the man too is trying to take observation of a butterfly and there's a plant in his front too. So from there, once observation is taken, you sit on your either um, on your laptop or on your phone. But also the guy is the... The man is also trying to take observation, a live observation on his app to record it on his phone, That's um, to upload it on his phone straight, that's through the app. Then you can see the lady too. Once um, observation is taken, she goes, she, she's trying to upload it straight to the website. So what has, she has uploaded to the iNaturalist website. So once it goes to the iNaturalist website, it goes straight to the GBEF, that's the Global Biodiversity Information Faculty. The Global Biodiversity Information Faculty synchronizes the information which you've gotten and gives us the information about the particular 
observation, which is God saying. It gives us a lot of information. It tells us the genuine, that the genius, the kingdom which it belongs. The um, so many informations about this which generally we are not aware of. Yes. So over to you, Jen Shutubo. All right. So these data once it is um, integrated with the GBIRF, with the rich data that we, we collect from GBIRF with the interconnection with other online identifiers, this can be created. We can create a Wikipedia article for it, link it to its Wikidata item. And the observation that is made by the gentleman here and the lady here um, could be uploaded. I mean, the images could be uploaded on Wikimedia Commons and then further link to either the Wikidata item or the Wikipedia article. So that's basically the general workflow of um, the iNaturalist platform. So the first step is to download the iNaturalist app on your phone, either an iPhone or an Android phone. The next step is creation of an account. Once you have an account, the next step is for you to make an observation and you can join other projects. Once you open the iNaturalist platform, then you search for Wikimental Africa data collection you're going to find this project and you can join it. There are thousands and ones of projects that you can join. Thanks to uh, Andrea Work, Mr. He's our mentor for this project. Um, he has created a Jupyter notebook that allows you to build stabs uh, of uh, stab articles on the Dagban Wikipedia, the English Wikipedia and the Igbo Wikipedia. Now these stab articles are just short articles that other people can get on board to uh basically elaborate on or to expand so the jupyter notebook is here and because of limited time we might not be able to demonstrate that but there are online resources for how to use this which we'll show you later okay over to you okay, okay so basically this is um once it's uploaded to in english this is how it looks like an english wikipedia so we have um, our various titles we have for the first one we have our title and the short description that's about the biodiversity what the biodiversity is itself then we have our info box info box and it could be data box again which we take from wikidata you have the link to wikimedia commons that's for the number three so basically this is how it looks like once it's uploaded to wikipedia then we have um link to other languages that's for the for the fifth section we have links to other languages. Then for the fourth section we have links to external identifiers. So back to you, Dean. Should we go? All right, thank you. So what is the aim of the, this whole project? Now our aim is just to provide start a starting point for article creation on any Wikipedia platform for biodiversity information. Again, we are trying to get more editors, Wikipedia editors to um, editing by diversity information just to in increase uh, the finability of uh, the biodiversity information and also on existing knowledge related to biodiversity. Okay, <clears throat> introduction to data box. So we have um, first of what we do is um, installation of data, if non-existent. We have the resources, we have the invoke the data box template. That was we invoke the data box template because that's what we use. Uh, we have we use our, our stop maker to invoke our data box. Then we now invoke the data box itself to our Wikipedia, which our data box come life of our biodiversity, it comes to life. Then we can also customize the data box. It's customized, customizable. Yeah, so I think we've, we've spoken about this. And um, we we were supposed to do a hands-on, but we just have some 20 minutes. And we are really happy that you've had time to watch this. Um, these are publications we've made in the last two years. You can check them, check them out online on either research uh, gate or uh, Google Scholar to read more about these. And thank you so much. And we truly appreciate your time and your presence. Bye everyone.
Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for your time.